Let me tell you something you already know. Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com. I'm going to discuss the two biggest reasons why hitters fail in the games. The two main reasons why our hitters aren't hitting as well in their games. Let's start with this. There are four main phases to hitting. Phase number one, stance. Phase number two, pre-acceleration or otherwise known as the load phase. Phase number three, acceleration phase. Phase number four, deceleration phase. Phase number one, the stance. One of the most important ideas in the stance phase is this. How does your batter watch the pitcher? Let me say it like this. How does the batter watch the pitcher in the stance phase? I've discovered in my research after over 27 years of teaching hitting, I've only found eight answers. When I ask the best hitters what they're, how they watch the pitcher, I've only got eight repeating answers. A lot of people, a lot of coaches, a lot of players, they don't really find value in how you watch the pitcher. I know it's valuable because the next phase or the pre-acceleration phase or load phase, you're doing something with your eyes. That's where the timing of the eyes happen next. So when you know the phase before the timing of your eyes, you understand the complexities, the intricacies that the eyes are going through. The eyes need to get in a position to read information. You need to know where are your eyes starting so that you can replicate that pattern, that technique every single time. When you just take it for granted and you wonder why you're in a slump, you, you sometimes and you realize, ah, it all began in my stance phase. I'm not doing what I usually do. I don't look at the pitcher the way I usually, usually watch the pitcher. The pre-acceleration phase, or a lot of people in our culture refer to it as the quote-unquote load phase. I prefer calling it the pre-acceleration phase because my mind is more in touch with the ball in this phase rather than more in touch with my body. I know it's a, your body's important in setting it up, but when I'm more in touch with the ball, then that means I'm more in touch and more sensitive to what my eyes are doing because my eyes need to read information about the ball. Why do I need information about the ball? Because I am just plainly going to react to that ball. Therefore, if I'm just going to react to this ball and I'm going to react to the speed and space of the ball, I need to be thoughtful and mindful and have sensitivity to what are my eyes doing in this phase to get ready to read information about the ball that I'm going to react to. Okay, so here in the pre-acceleration phase slash load phase is the number one problem hitters face in the games. Number one mistake. Hitters watch the pitcher too long. Again, hitters watch the pitchers too long. The mistake is not so much as timing the load as it is timing your vision. The mistake in the pre-acceleration phase or load phase is not so much the mechanical side, it's the, the timing of the thought. It's the timing of preparing to get your eyes in position to get information from the ball. 
This is where all your data-driven hitting science is failing us because all it does in a load phase, it measures your uh, points of, 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 of hotness, your muscles getting hot, your, your, your muscles firing, uh, your areas of your body uh, preparing to squeeze down and become tense to fire your scaps, your hips, your legs, your toes. And you know what? When you're in the game, you don't care about that. Look, if you're playing tennis, if you're playing hockey, if you're playing soccer, the simplicity of playing sports is this. Athletes, when they're about to load the leg, load, pull back their arm, pull back the hockey stick, all they care about, or even catching a football, all you care about is getting your body in, in position to react to the catch, the slap shot, hitting the ball. You're, you're thinking about the object, where the object is now and where the object is going next. You just react to the object. Now why all of a sudden does it change for baseball and softball? Why is it suddenly now all we care about is the structure, the positioning of the body. Where are the body parts? We look at it at the, the hitters in a frame, and a lot of times we don't consider what they are reacting to. We put them in a box. We don't think about the stimulus, the object, the ball, the puck um, that they're reacting to. Now, let me go back to the ex explanation of the number one problem hitters are confronted with in their games. They watch the pitcher too long. Good elite hitters, when they are in their stance phase, when they are in their load phase, you know what good hitters think about? The ball. Doesn't that common sense? They're thinking about the ball. That's what elite hitters think about. Now here's what happens. When you make the mistake, when the ball comes out from the pitcher's body, baseball or softball, it begins a flight path. And guess what happens? The hitters for a split second, for a, even if it's just a hundredth of a second, they are still stuck on the pitcher and they miss the opportunity to see the ball earlier in the flight path. But guess what? See, a ball doesn't stop for you and say, oh, wait a minute, here, let me slow down and let me allow you to read the information. No, this is a moving object you're dealing with in a batter's box. And you know what? When you watch picture too long, now, as a hitter, you're picking the ball up later in its flight path. Now, when you could have picked it up at the 50-foot marker for a baseball player, who with a pitcher stands 60 feet away. Now remember, I just said that. I said 50 feet away. I didn't say pick up the ball 60 feet away. I didn't say pick up the ball at 55 feet away. I said pick up the ball at 50 feet away. Now, when you could have picked up the ball at 50 feet away, you didn't. You pick up the ball now at 45 feet away, or even worse, 40 feet away. And you know what happens to you? You experience this word. You experience the word ambush. You experience being ambushed. So I love this word ambush. I've been using it a lot and players are connecting with it. Okay, maybe as coaches you can see also now when you watch the hitter's eyes as they hit, you can understand clear, hey, I know, I know what Dave's talking about. Ambush. Ambush means this. It's a noun as a noun, a surprise attack by people lying in a concealed position. Or as a verb, it means this. Make a surprise attack on someone from a concealed position. Confront someone suddenly and unexpectedly with unwelcome questions. So, with that definition, how does it translate to hitting? into a hitter. It's like this. When the hitter is watching a pitcher too long and they miss picking up the ball early in the flight path, 
and now they pick up the ball later in the flight path, it feels like to, as to the hitter, the ball just ambushed them. The ball came out of somewhere unexpectedly, like, oh my gosh, where'd that ball come from? Oh, it's almost here. So now, the hitter's confronted with a, a, a challenging situation. The ball is almost on top of them, and they need to panic. They know in the back of their brain, they need to bring this barrel down into the strike zone to meet the ball. And now they're in desperation mode. Now they're in panic mode. And as coaches, our culture, the norm is, well, you know what? They're flying open. They're dropping their back shoulder. They're collapsing. You know, they're not watching the ball or they're lunging, right? I've come to understand a lot of these problems when players don't pick up the ball early in the flight path or only a, a result from the miss, being ambushed by the ball. Now, you may have asked yourself this question or disagreed with me inside this pre-acceleration phase or load phase when I said you don't see the ball out of the pitcher's hand, right? You see it about 50 feet later, okay? And yes, sports science has validated this to us almost a decade ago. Hitters, good hitters, do not see the ball out of the pitcher's hand. From my own experiences as a hitter, and from my interview experiences of talking to a lot of elite hitters, okay, we're not seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand. In fact, when you interview hitters, hey, did did you try to see the ball out of the pitcher's hand in the game, or? When I'm taking batting practice, are, are you thinking about seeing the ball in my hand? More times than not, hitters say no. It doesn't even cross my mind to see the ball in your hand because there is an illusion taking place. There is a, there's a gap where you don't see the ball. And that's where, for years, I've told players, and I've taught players, and I spoke about this in my videos, when you watch the pitcher, whether you look right at the specific area or it's on the back of your mind, every pitcher has a common denominator that is going to be a signal or it's going to act as an indicator that your ball is about to be thrown. And your ball, you're, gonna, you're about to see your ball. That common denominator is inside every single pitcher. And it, it, it it infuses itself when you ask the hitter and it, when you're in your stand stays, what are you looking at? You see, and then you can explain this common denominator and, and fit it in to eight different answers that I found how the pitcher, how the, how the batter watches the pitcher. And for those hitters who say they see the ball out of the pitcher's hand, I can offer an explanation for that too. Now, let me explain the second biggest problem hitters are challenged with during their games. This problem happens in the acceleration phase. If a hitter picks up the ball good in the flight path and they're looking at the ball coming in and they, they, they can calibrate the speed of the pitch, and they can calibrate the space the ball is moving into, and the ball looks so good to them, right? This is what happens. The last five feet, maybe six feet of the flight path, the hitter can't take it anymore and just wants to mash the ball. The hitter wants to crush the ball. The hitter wants to just hit the ball as hard as you can. The hitter wants to swing as hard as they can. And do you know what happens when that is being manifested? Most of the time. I didn't say all, but I'm saying most of the time. The hitter experiences a disconnection. The hitter experiences a disconnection with the flight path. There's a disconnection with the end of the flight path. There's a disconnection to where the last final space I'm going to react to the ball 
in his flight path. And because there's a disconnection, I mess up. I roll over. I pop up. I may even swing and miss. At the last five feet of the flight path, let me sum it up. The hitter gets too excited and experiences something that I've called years back angst. They experience hitter's angst. Now, for both cases, you know why it's so important to learn and distinguish this uh, during batting practice? That you don't watch a picture too long and you learn the pattern and technique of how to time your vision at the start? And you know why it's so important that when you take batting practice and you, you exercise, okay, um, I don't want to experience hitter's angst. I don't want to get too excited um, in batting practice where I, I lose the, 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 um, the calibration of speed and space the last five feet. Do you know why? It's because of this. When you take batting practice, our brains are always recording the hitter's brain is always recording how to, how to complete this hitting event, how to handle this, this idea, this concept that we call hitting. They're recording the processes, they're recording what are you thinking about while you do this. And this is where our hitting culture, quote unquote, the norm of the hitting culture is failing our community, is failing our coaches, is failing our players. Most of the time, the data-driven science in teaching, teaching hitting, and most of the time when our coaches are drilling our players to think about the mechanics during the stance phase. Think about your mechanics during the pre-acceleration load phase. Think about your mechanics, your movement patterns during the acceleration phase. Guess what? When you practice, your brain is always recording, think about my body, think about my body, think about my body. But when you arrive at the game, now we're told to put your thoughts on the ball. Or oddly enough, hmm, don't think anymore, just do it. At what point in your practices did our did your hitters learn how to program your brain to think about the ball now anybody can say hey go up to home play in the game and just think about the ball that's a, a pretty wide blanket statement being a teacher I know this and maybe you're a teacher yourself and you know this as well that sometimes, or more likely most of the times, your students need to have a more descriptive account, a more descriptive explanation. Well, what do you mean by think about the ball? And that's my point. These video series, these online video courses I have explain to hitters in, in version in course number three, in course number four, in course number five, how to think about the ball. I teach you the patterns and the techniques how to get your eyes in position both at the beginning and at the end. This is what the brain needs to record during batting practice because this is exactly what elite hitters do when they're in their games. How you think about the ball ultimately affects how you time your vision. This is the most valuable mechanism for elite hitting. So let me just close in summary by saying this. Mistake number one hitters make in the games is this. They watch the pitcher too long. They don't pick up the ball earlier in the flight path. From my research, I have good reason to believe that hitters are getting stuck on the pitcher because they actually don't think about the ball until they see the ball. They don't think about the ball until they see the ball. Mistake number two, hitters see the ball well, but it's the last five feet of the flight path of the ball, the hitter gets too excited. 
that wants to smash the ball. And therefore, they get disconnected to the last place of the flight path where good connection is going to be made, where the best leverage is going to happen. I'm Dave Kirloff. I have the online video courses to help you learn how to teach your hitters or help your hitters learn these patterns and these techniques so that they can practice them in batting practice and help their brains to record them so now they go to the games and guess what? They know how to think at home plate. They know how to think so well and correctly and accurately about the ball that there's no space in their brain to be nervous. There's no room in their brain to, to have, be, have distractions. They know how to fixate themselves with the ball accurately and correctly. And guess what? They have better results when it's game time. And a note about swing mechanics. Hey, I value them. I know swing mechanics and patterns are important. But guess what? I've learned and I teach a system on our online video courses this that you can correct any swing mechanics fault on the deceleration phase of the swing it's unique it's it's wonderful because during the acceleration phases of the hitter hitter they need to fixate their minds on the ball they need to be taught patterns how to think about the ball right and and on the deceleration side that's where as a hitting coach is we can manipulate the swing pass we can teach the hitters how to keep the bat longer in the zone just alone by the on the on the deceleration side it's wonderful i have four patterns i teach hitters how to how to self-correct yourself your your swing path from the deceleration side the deceleration side is is after you hit the ball during the acceleration phase i'm only thinking about the ball i am immersed i'm fixated on the ball during the deceleration phase hey that's where i work on my mechanics that's where i work on my swing pass this approach is sophisticated it is innovative it is progressive this will revolutionize your hitting. Together, let's help our players, let's help our kids be as good as they can be while they're still young. I'm Dave Kirloff, languageofhitting.com, and may the Lord bless you. Starting pitching has been the story for the Wahoos in the back end of this homestand. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. There's a swing and a base hit into left field, a humpback liner. One hops the left fielder Christian Pache, and Kirilov has a multi-hit night. Good swing that time from Kirilov.